Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Striking a Balance Caregiver Conference. We're so glad that you have joined us today. My name is Rob Fabian with Age of Central Texas. We're a regional nonprofit organization that serves older adults and family caregivers. And for the past 22 years, it's been our privilege to partner with our friends at the Area Agency on Aging of the Capital Area to bring you the Striking a Balance Caregiver Conference, which is now the largest and longest running caregiver conference in Central Texas. This year, we're going to be doing our seminars and our presentations virtually so that you have a chance to join us each day this week, Monday through Thursday, for some great, wonderful speakers and some fantastic topics. A little quick housekeeping before we get started today. As you've noticed, we are recording our sessions so that if you have to leave early today or if there's a session that you might miss or one that you want to share with friends and family, we're going to share the those links with you and they're going to live on our YouTube channel so you can go back and look at them anytime that you would like. Later this week we're also going to send you our program as an electronic copy and that way you'll have lots of caregiver resources that are there as well. Then finally during today's session we want you to ask questions because this seminar is for you. So right here at the bottom of your window, you have a chat feature. Looks like one of those thought bubbles that you see in the comics. If you click on that, it'll open up your chat box and then you can type in your questions. At the end of today's session, we're gonna answer all of your questions. So as we go and something that you think of, type in that question. We're gonna keep track of them and then we'll answer them at the end of today. We also want to say a big thank you to AARP for being our presenting sponsor for this year's conference. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Sherry Wright with the Area Agency on Aging, and she's going to introduce today's speaker. Welcome, everybody. I have the privilege to introduce Dina Carpenter. Um, she's with our Capable Program here at the Area Agency on Aging. She is a member of the American Occupational Therapy Association Board Certified Occupational Therapist. She earned her Master's of Science in Occupational Therapy from Indiana University and has been designated as a certified aging employer. Like I said, she is currently working with the Area Agency on Aging with the CAPABLE program, which is a CAPABLE means Community Aging in Place, Advancing Better Living for Elders. Um, Dina, take it away. All right. Thank you, Sherry. I'm going to bring up my screen for everyone to see. And get on full view for you. There we go. All right. I am so excited to be here today. Um, sharing with you about um, some ways that we can help um, our caregivers. So as an occupational therapist, that is very exciting for me. I'm going to um, move forward. Um, so today, um, tools for safe caregiving, how to use durable medical equipment, perform transfers, and keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Those are some of the main topics. So I'm really excited about going over that with you. Um, I wanted to share with you aging in place, the actual definition. So the CDC defines aging in place as the ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently and comfortably, regardless of age, income or ability level. And it's really important our caregivers, their, their value cannot be overstated. And so I am so excited to be here to share with you ways that we can help. So as an occupational therapist, my goal is to provide uh, safety strategies, tools, and resources for you as caregivers to support your family members with aging in place. And I'm going to do some adjusting on my screen really quick. That helps me to see a little bit better. All right. So some of the topics today that I will be covering include common and frequently used medical equipment, where you can get some of these items, how to correctly use your medical equipment, safety, including transfers and caregiver help, 
And then I would like to share with you about the CAPABLE program, um, which is a Johns Hopkins University uh, School of Nursing program that started in 2009 that we now have here in Texas that I'm a part of. And it's a very exciting program for um, seniors in the community and even caregivers. And then last, I have some really um, important additional resources with links to a lot of um, safety um, tools and videos that can help you with your caregiving. So, so age-related changes, talking about that. So as we age, we know that the, the risk of falls increases as well as our functional abilities, they decrease. So some of those areas um, include our cardiovascular system. That is not what it used to be. So the pumping capacity of our heart is reduced with age. Our bones and our joints and muscles um, change. So we have reduced muscle mass, reduced bone density, and those joints are getting worn out. So we're starting to have some joint inflammation. Our bladder and urinary tract, um, we're having to make more trips to the bathroom. Our vision is becoming reduced and our hearing as well. And then with our skin sensation, we're not feeling things um, the same way. We have reduced sensation and our skin is much more fragile. So our seniors are dealing with a lot of those things. Then with our memory, as you may notice, difficulties with sustaining attention, multitasking, um, holding information in your mind and word finding. So those are things that we'll start noticing. And those are just normal aging, part of the normal aging process. So three key areas um, as an occupational therapist that I like to look at include safe mobility, um, activities of daily living, also known as ADLs, and that includes the way that you take care of yourself. So like bathing, dressing, personal hygiene, uh, instrumental activities of daily living, also known as IADLs. Um, that's the other areas that you take care of, like caring for their home, including meal prep, cleaning, laundry, um, even medication management. And then um, it's important to look at how we can improve safety and independence um, and increase that accessibility and reduce um, fall risk in these areas. So that is what we're gonna look at next. So with safe mobility, um, we have, we're looking at walking indoors, getting around in the home, how we can help with that, reaching items on the floor or up high overhead, moving in and out of the shower, maintaining balance while showering is a big one. A lot of falls happen in, that, in the bathroom, so that's an area that we really wanna look closely at. Moving in and out of a chair or bed can be difficult. Getting on and off the toilet, and then getting in and out of a car. And then one of the most difficult ones that I see a lot with my seniors is getting up from the floor. So if, you've, if they've ever um, gotten down in the floor, getting back up can be one of the most difficult things. So we um, work on ways that we can help make that safer and easier for them. So with mobility, the first place that we want to address is preventing falls in the bathroom. And according to the National Institute of Health, the majority of our falls in the home do occur in the bathroom. So with age, the body changes, making it more difficult and less safe to do everyday tasks like bathing. So we've talked a little bit about those changes. We um, can see balance issues. And of course that muscle weakness can affect that. But the good news is that we have um, some easy ways to make those changes. So moving forward with that examples, we can just add some grab bars. We can provide shower chairs, raise toilet seats, um, handheld shower wands can help and adding a non-slip bath mat. So these are some simple ways that we can make a difference in that um, safe mobility. With this picture, we have a lot of items that we can talk about. So I love pictures to kind of give you an idea of some safety um, items that you can add. So simple, simple items, including a shower chair. I like ones um, that have a back on them. This one actually has arms, which is great if space allows. That gives that extra mobility moving in and out of the shower. And you'll also notice the handheld shower wand in the picture, um, and they can be secured to the shower chair. Some have uh, notches in the seat where you can actually put that shower wand in. The importance with that is that it reduces that need to stand up um, to adjust the water or to um, put the shower wand away. So we would like to um, limit the amount of moving around in the shower because that is um, one of the number one fall areas with the soap um, and everything is slippery in there and it is a very unforgiving surface. So the least amount of movement that we are doing in there increases that safety and reduces fall risk. 
So this is a good setup. You'll also notice in the picture, um, there's a shower caddy so that all of those items that someone would need for bathing are right there close. So again, not needing to stand up and um, reach for those items. So that's very important. And then on the right side, you'll notice um, a non-slip bath mat. So having some kind of non-slip adhesive in the bottom of the shower, including like shower strips that you can put down or a bath mat. And then also having a mat when, they, um, when someone steps out that has a rubber backing to prevent falls. Um, all of those things are really simple additions that can increase that safety in the bathroom. So when we're looking at those items and we're thinking about getting something, a shower chair or a tub bench, we want to know which one would be best. So here's a couple pictures um, with some options on that. And I'm gonna talk about the differences now. So when we're looking at those, deciding between the two, you'll see, I actually um, pulled this off of the CareX uh, website. So that's one of our brands that we look at and I'll discuss some different brands, but they have a great guide for selecting the right shower seat and providing guidance on measuring and how to determine what's best. But some of the reasons that we would choose one over the other um, include for a, a transfer bench, this is gonna be a, a larger item. It's gonna fit on the inside and outside. It will provide more support if you're needing more support for transfers for uh, your loved one that you're helping. Um, and they are typically safer if there's a lot of difficulty going on. They do require more space in the bathroom. So some bathrooms are small and it's gonna be um, hard to have something that size in there. On the other side, we have shower chairs and they are completely inside the shower. They are smaller, of course, and more compact. And sometimes they um, only hold a smaller weight capacity. So that's something that you wanna check on. They are more ideal for those smaller spaces, smaller showers. And again, there's um, also the portability. They can be taken if you're, um, you're traveling somewhere and you need uh, some extra support um, when you're traveling. This is something you can um, just toss in the back of the, the trunk and take it with you. So it is uh, a good feature for that too. Some of the um, price range on these. So with the bigger, um, tub bench, we're looking between $70 and $100, whereas the shower chair can be um, a little more inexpensive around the $40 and $50 range. So those are some, some differences in the two. So um, talking about the tub bench and how to use that. So transfers are really important. There are a lot of great um, resources online to demonstrate safe transfers. Um, but I always recommend consulting with your healthcare professionals professionals such as an RN, an OT, or a PT when you're getting um, support with that. I like um, to provide pictures with short, um, easy step-by-step um, -step directions. So for instance, this is an example of what I would like to see um, used and what I provide sometimes. So with these pictures, it really does help someone after an injury or surgery um, that they have new challenges doing the everyday task. And there's a lot of fear um, in our care, um, our loved ones and with caregivers helping them transfer in. So with this one, you can notice the pictures are very simple. It's something that you could look at with them together and kind of talk through those simple step-by-step -step directions so that they feel comfortable and you feel comfortable helping them transfer into the tub. And so for, for example, um, simple steps like uh, step one, backing up to the tub bench until you feel that um, bench at, against the back of your legs. And then step two, reach back for the tub bench and lower yourself onto the seat. And then step three, turn your body toward the tub and lift your leg into the tub and then lift your other leg into the tub. So simple language like that, working with your loved one can help them feel confident about making such a transfer, uh, especially when there's been an injury and the normal things that they've done have all been changed for them. So this is a really good example of um, something that you could use for them. This is the other option. So that was your tub bench seat. So it showed the difference of how it was on the outside um, and how this one is on the inside. So kind of looking at the difference. So that tub bench seat comes all the way out and it gives more support for them to transfer into the tub. And then here is an example of your shower chair. And what you will notice that's different in this one is that you'll see grab bars because this is one where they're still having to step completely into the tub. And so I like to have uh, grab bars at the entrance when they're stepping into the tub 
um, and then also one on the inside to help uh, stabilize them when they're inside. So we'll talk about placement on grab bars a little bit um, farther into the to the presentation. But for this one, it'd be a similar um, simple steps, pictures for them to see what they're going to be doing, um, and then just kind of talking them through that. So they'll be facing the wall and holding on to the grab bar, stepping into the tub um, with one leg, the leg closest to the tub, then lifting their other leg and then having a seat on the chair. And then you just would reverse those steps to, to come back out of the tub. So for the, for the uh, loved one that's had an injury, this can be very calming. And when that, that fear has been reduced, it also helps reduce that risk of falls because if someone is having a lot of fear when they're uh, moving in and out of a bathroom uh, tub transfer, um, that fear can cause them to overreact or um, make a, a, the, a wrong move, a sudden move that could cause them uh, an injury. So having that moment of uh, talking with them, this is what we're going to do and here's the steps is can be really helpful for them. So next we're going to talk a little bit about um, safe mobility and adding grab bars. So of course we're going to look at the bathroom first because as we've discussed that is the number one um, place that we have falls mm -hmm. and I love the resources that we have through some of our um, places like Lowe's. They have links and, and I have actually placed that in the resource section that you can go to and it will um, give you lots of tips and advice on where to place grab bars, how to make sure that they're installed properly, and um, just different resources on just making your home safer. And they give tips like um, using uh, stud finder with a deep scan mode. So if that's something that someone in your home is going to be doing or you're going to be doing for your loved one, then that is, um, that's a great resource to go to their side. And I'll actually look into that a little bit more um, towards the end of the, the presentation to share that with you a little bit more. So... And then talking about safe mobility um, options for the toilet. So again, it's more grab bars there. So um, on the one on the left, you'll notice that this is a raised toilet seat with arms on it. It mounts easily to your existing toilet. The picture on the right is going to be um, more of a comfort height toilet. So it's not needing that additional height. So a comfort height or a right height toilet um, is going to be 17 inches to 19 inches high as compared to your um, regular toilet, which could be as low as 15 inches. And that makes it much more difficult for our loved ones to get up um, from the toilet. So um, the good news with these, it's very easy to install. You're not really needing to hire um, someone to come in and, and put a grab bar in. It's something if you're going to stay with someone, um, you could use these. This is something that you could take to a family or if you're renting. So these are a, a really good option for increasing that mobility in the toilet and um, moving around in the bathroom, getting up and down from the toilet. So if you do decide that you want permanent grab bars, there's many options. And you'll notice on the left side, we have a picture um, of some standard locations for grab bars um, beside the toilet, behind the toilet. I love the, um, the one on the right, the picture. It looks just like a toilet paper dispenser, but actually at the top, it is a grab bar. So it is um, attached permanently into a stud. And then it looks um, more natural, like just a, a regular toilet paper dispenser. I have a lot of um, my seniors in the homes really like this um, rather than having a lot of grab bars in there. So that's a great option. Again, we talked a little bit about those raised toilet seats. They can provide an additional three and a half inches to the height of the toilet. So if you have a standard height toilet, this is an option. I love the uh, ones on the, the picture on the right has the hinged easy cleaning. This is a, a, a really good addition that they've come up with to make it much easier for cleaning so it can raise up. Um, what you will need to determine is, is the toilet bowl round or is it oblong? And that will make a difference in which one you order. So that's something to think about, but that can be um, an easy way to make it safer moving around in the bathroom. And then you've probably seen the three-in-one bedside commodes. Um, these can be used beside the bed after um, an injury or recovery from a surgery. They can also be used as a raised toilet seat with a safety frame over a standard toilet. And they um, even have some that are designed for use as a shower chair to improve safe bathing. They, 
that they can be um, rolled in on so that they have wheels on them. So that's another option that you may see. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about safe mobility, um, moving in and out of the bed. So you may have a loved one that just needs a little extra support getting in and out of bed. So safely um, moving um, to a higher bed. A lot of the uh, beds that I'm seeing um, are still those really high um, beds that are kind of difficult to get in and out of. So if they're just needing a little bit of support, we have um, some great options. And I wanted to pull some pictures up for this. So the picture on the left, you have a step that actually has a motion sensor light and it has um, grab bars or rails on each side. So that gives a lot of support going in and out of the bed. The one in the middle I like because it's actually a good multi-purpose um, step. It can be used to get in and out of the car, reaching items that are up high or used um, just to give that extra boost to get up in the bed safely. I like that it has the, um, the arm rail on the side to, to give that support. And then the other one is just a, more of a, a basic mobility step, gives you just a little bit of a step up to get into the bed. So some of the price ranges on these, the one on the left is a little bit more expensive. I've found it um, around the $200 range um, on Amazon. And then the one in the middle, it runs about um, $70 to $80. And then the basic step, just about $30. So there's lots of uh, variety in, in what you can do as far as price range and how much support you're needing. So in the next picture, this is when you have um, the caregivers needing to give that support. So you as the caregiver are actually needing to help your loved one move in and out of the bed. And this may be from um, a recent surgery or um, a long-term illness, and they are really struggling to get in and out safely. And so as a caregiver, again, I really like to have something that you can talk with them about so that they can help with this whole process, because it's important for you as the caregiver to protect yourself and reduce that back strain. And so having these steps can really help with that. Um, for instance, step one, just the caregiver is going to help bend um, the knees of the loved one, then the, roll them toward the side of the bed, placing one hand on their hip and the other hand on their shoulder. Simple steps. Number three, the caregiver will swing their legs over the side of the bed and place one hand under their shoulder and one hand on their hips, helping them to raise up. The caregiver will also encourage them to push off the mattress. So helping um, them be a part of it so that it reduces that strain. Because think about doing this every day or several times a day, that strain on your back um, can become a real problem. So it's important to have these techniques, just some simple ways of doing it, just a little bit easier. And this is what they use um, in the hospitals and in nursing facilities just to help the support staff there to be able to um, help with that mobility of moving in and out of bed. So, And then we're going to next move on to talking about activities of daily living. And I shared with you earlier, that's, you know, caring for yourself. Um, and some of those areas um, were bathing and showering, um, personal hygiene and grooming, and then dressing, including uh, putting on shoes and socks, that can be tricky, and then reaching for items. So we're going to look at some ways that we can help with that. So here are some adaptive tools to support some of those ADLs. We already talked a little bit about um, the bathing and showering. We talked about the shower wand. You'll also notice in the picture below the shower wand on the left is a long-handled sponge. Again, that's another great resource so that um, your loved one can actually sit on a shower chair and have that long handled sponge to reach their feet, reach their back. They're not needing to move around a whole lot for that. Then in the middle, you'll notice some pictures of a long handled uh, comb and brush. For a lot of our seniors, it's hard for them to reach um, back to um, brush their hair and, and take care of um, their personal grooming. There's also um, hair dryers that have holders that can sit on a counter. It can be raised up um, to a higher height so that they're not needing to hold onto that. So there's a lot of really good adaptive tools and equipment to help um, so that they can do the things that they want to for themselves. And then um, the next side is kind of addressing that uh, shoes and socks. So the top one is that uh, sock aid and it helps them if they're not able to bend to be able to um, go ahead and 
put the sock on that and then you drop it down and they just push their foot in much easier getting socks on. And that's something that I work with a lot with our um, seniors that are having difficulty. A lot of times if they've had any kind of hip or knee surgeries, they have precautions and they're not able to bend. So they will come home with these items and an OT will typically um, show them um, at the hospital or rehab facility how to use these. And then the long handled shoe horn is another great um, tool for getting um, their shoes on safely while they're seated and not needing to reach. And you'll notice um, at the very bottom is a reacher and you'll see different, a lot of different ones. They have some that have magnets that are very lightweight. They even uh, bend and fold up to a compact size. Um, this one is actually um, one that will hold up to five pounds. It's one that I um, use a lot. I like to talk with uh, my seniors about. It can hold up to like a, this, a can good if they're needing to reach up and get something. So sometimes being able to reach something and really um, hold a, a decent amount of weight is important so that they can pull something into them. And so um, we'll talk about different ones that they might need and, and how that can support them. So. Next, we're gonna look at um, activities of daily living, instrumental activities. So anything that's outside of caring for themselves. So doing light homemaking, light housework, taking um, medication, managing that, um, meal prep and cleanup. So some of those basic needs. And with this picture, you will notice some um, ways that we can address that. So with doing light homemaking, um, using a lightweight vacuum that's um, going to make it a lot easier. They have some. This one in the picture um, is supposed to be three to five pounds. Um, and then another one is a lightweight Swiffer type mop. Um, that's a, a better um, option than some of the traditional mops. And then it's important for them to remember to take breaks. So anytime um, there's a lot of uh, house, you know, homemaking and housework going on, a lot of our seniors still want to be able to care for their homes, but it's important that they uh, manage their um, energy levels so that they're not getting overly tired. So remembering to take breaks, I always encourage that um, and finding ways to, you know, have a, have a seat and do some of the mopping. So we talk about that with some, some of our seniors. Um, taking medication, you'll notice at the top uh, right picture, um, those organizers are pretty commonly seen in a lot of uh, homes. Um, another great thing that we have with technology is reminders on the phone. I've, I've been able to set up uh, medicine reminders for a lot of our seniors, so that's a good way. If they're having a difficulty remembering one of their medicines is new that they're needing to take that they haven't been, having that medication reminder put on their phone really does help. And then at the bottom, kind of talking about meal prep. With the picture at the bottom, you'll notice that is um, called a rocker knife. So a lot of our seniors have difficulty um, cutting with a, a knife. They have maybe arthritis or just difficulty. This, you just have to place down, put a little bit of pressure and rock back and forth and they can actually cut their items up. There's other great things that are out there for um, our seniors that maybe have arthritis and are needing additional grip. You have some um, different tools that can build up the handles. Um, we have lighter weight pans that we can talk about. And then also um, moving those frequently used items in the kitchen down lower is always important to do. Next, I was gonna talk a little bit about some common transfers. Um, some of those include moving in and out of the bed, which we had uh, discussed and I showed you a picture on that, moving in and out of a wheelchair, uh, moving in and out of a chair or sofa, um, on and off the toilet, and then on and off of a bath chair or bench. We kind of discussed that and had some pictures. In and out of a car is another area that can be a lot of difficulty um, with our, our seniors. And then you'll notice on the right we have um, pictured a transfer or gate belt. This can be really helpful in reducing um, fall risk and serious injuries. And this can be worn um, when your loved one is walking around in the home and you're needing to be there because they're a little unstable. It's easy to hold on to to prevent falls 
or to slowly lower someone down to prevent serious injury. So a lot of times you'll see this in um, hospitals and rehab facilities. But it's an easy um, thing that you can add to your home. It, it only costs between eight and $10. And it really does make a difference in just helping with that stability um, when, when there's an unsteadiness. And what I would like to say as far as transfers, if your loved one has stayed, has had a stay in the hospital or a rehab facility, it's important to have that medical team provide transfer training for them, as well as those who may be caring for them before discharge. So um, that's a really important thing they can work with you on. And also if they um, receive um, home health, asking to review um, those transfer um, strategies and steps is really important because doing that hands-on practice is going to be um, most important. So pictures are good and that's good reminders, but actually having practiced it with someone is really important. Um, and I did want to put in um, pictures and steps for transfers in and out of the car. Another easy one um, to look at and review with them before. And I love some of the tips on here that just help. So um, number one, positioning that car seat back as far as possible. And then you can use a cushion or a pillow on the seat to raise up that sitting surface. Also a plastic trash bag of all things. If you put that on the seat, it actually can help them slide and, and it makes it easier sliding in and out. You just wanna remove that while you're driving. Um, number two, the next thing you would do is back, um, back up to the car until both of the legs are touching the seat. So this is what, as a caregiver, you would share with your loved one. You're gonna go over these steps and say, okay, next we're gonna back up to the car until you can feel that seat at the back of your legs. That's really important. Um, and then place one hand on the dashboard, one hand on the back of the seat, tuck your head and lower yourself into the seat. Number four, you would just move back and then lift your legs into the car one at a time. Always important to maintain um, any precautions that have been instructed um, following um, your, by your doctor. So if, the, if you've had a surgery or any kind of injury that may have precautions that the doctor tells you, there may be limitations on how much bending um, you're able to do so following any kind of precautions anytime um, you're moving or doing any transfers is important. All right, next, I thought it would be really good to talk about common brands of durable medical equipment. So you may be thinking um, when I'm out um, looking for a certain item, some of these that we've talked about, how do I know um, how to choose those, what, what ones are good, and um, how do I find them? So some of the ones that I see, some of the more common ones that you'll know um, or that I use, um, Drive is a, a brand that I see a lot, Guardian, Carex, I know I even referenced their site, they have a very good resource um, section on their website, um, Homecraft, Medline, and Vive are some of the more common ones. There are a lot of others, but I just wanted to, to bring out some um, that I use and see a lot. And then where can you purchase some of these? So I think that's always important. So number one, I put on Amazon and we're all getting pretty familiar with Amazon. I think it's very important um, to note that it's very important to read the reviews. So a lot of the brands that I just went over, um, Carex, um, for example, um, they have their items on the Amazon site. Um, you can go actually from there into their actual website and look at some of their um, tips on how to choose the right one. So that's a great resource and they actually have them on Amazon. But what you will find often is items that are very popular. Um, there will be something that looks very similar to it on there, but it will be just a little bit less. And the reviews that only have maybe five reviews, whereas another one might have a thousand reviews. And that's where you want to be careful because... Um, it's important to find things that have a lot of reviews that have had good reviews versus some that maybe someone's just decided to try to copy um, a piece of medical equipment, which could be um, more dangerous because um, with only four or five reviews, you really don't know what you're getting. So I just caution you to read the reviews and try to look for some of those main brands that you know um, are good. Other areas you can find uh, medical equipment, of course your CVS, Walmart, Lowe's and Home Depot have a lot of equipment, Target, Walgreens, and then American Discount Medical Equipment um, is another great area, a great place to get equipment from. So next, 
I wanted to talk about the capable program. I'm sorry, my computer is advancing without me. Let me back up. All right. So the capable program is uh, stands for Community Aging in Place, Advance or Advancing Better Living for Elders. This was developed at the Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing for older adults to safely age in place. I'm actually um, a part of this program and I'm excited. We've been doing this for, this is our third year that it has been here in Texas. We have it here, two sites um, in the Austin area. And I think there may be one in Houston. Um, it was started um, in 2009 um, through the Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing. And so they have a lot of really good evidence-based uh, information about how it has helped our seniors to age safely in place. So I'm very excited to share with you about that and the fact that we have that now here. And so I wanted to share a little bit about that. So what is the CAPABLE program? Uh, CAPABLE program focuses on the person and the environment and it helps increase the participant's capacity to age in place and reduces that risk of hospitalization. It is a time limited service, which includes an interprofessional team of an occupational therapist, a registered nurse and a home repair professional working together um, with that older adult. And this is done through the capable approach. And currently, um, this is being funded by the St. David's Foundation grant. We really appreciate that funding and we're excited to have them on board. So what is the capable approach? The capable team makes home visits. The capable approach is different from the medical home services approach. The adult determines the goals and actions, not the OT or the RN, and they don't need a doctor's note or prescription. So the capable program is also free. And here's some of the results that have come out of this program. Increased physical function, reduced depression, fewer risk of hospitalization and nursing home stays, and environment modified to support the person. So the capable team is actually made up of those four um, team members. Number one, we have the participant. And the participant sets and drives their own goals, learns safety strategies for independent living, practices their safety strategies, and then uses those skills and equipment. Number two, the second person on that team is the occupational therapist. And some key functions the occupational therapist does includes uh, assessing uh, home risk and functional mobility for equipment needs and providing fall prevention strategies. We also have a registered nurse that participates. The registered nurse looks at um, medical history, key health risk, including pain and current medications. And then next we have the home repair professional. We're excited to have that as a part of this feature. Um, they can make minor home repairs or safety modifications based on that work order that I will fill out as an OT or one of our OTs would fill out. So we work with um, them on that and, and decide what safety modifications might be needed. And along with the, um, the senior as well, they make those decisions. And so I like this slide to kind of show um, how this, um, sequence of visits works together with the OT, the RN, and the home repairman. So it's spread out over the four months. And as you can see, um, once a referral is made, the OT comes in and you can see um, in the picture below, the OT will set the first visit, then the OT will make a second visit. And then within two weeks after that second OT visit, the home repair professional will come out and look and see if there's any minor repairs or modifications and gear those towards the participants goals and they will discuss what's needed um, and the OT with the participant will make a decision on, on what they would like to have done based on their goals and then you can see where the nurse comes on board about the sec after the second visit and they are spread out um, throughout the, that sequence of time. So each time it's about a month in between so the OT is there for the first two weeks and then the sessions are spread out by uh, one month at a time. During that time, the nurse comes in and the home repair professional. I like that it's spread out. It doesn't um, seem like there's so much going on in the home at one time. 
And so here's some of the great results that come from that. So like I said, this is an evidence-based program and it is shown uh, to save in medical cost. Um, the difficulty in function um, has been cut in half. So where they were having difficulties with um, four out of eight activities of daily living at baseline, by the end of it, that's cut down to two. And one of the um, most important ones is just that improved motivation. So where they have, um, where they have partnered with looking at the environment and the physical environment with the participant, as well as their difficulties, it really has increased um, motivation within uh, that participant to believe that they can make those changes to be safer. And from that, it's shown to have reduced uh, symptoms of depression. So that's very exciting evidence that's come out of the program. So who is eligible for the program? At least uh, the person participant needs to be at least 60 years of age or older, um, reside um, currently in Bastrop, Caldwell, Hayes, or Williamson counties, and they need to have some difficulty performing at least one ADL or two of the IEDLs that we discussed, um, and then live at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. And they um, they have to have the ability to manage their goals um, and action plans. That's a big part of the program is just teaching them to um, problem solve through different situations that so that it can carry them after the program's over. So they need to be cognitively intact. They cannot have any type of dementia or Alzheimer's and not currently receiving any advanced cancer treatments, hospice or medical home health services. Now, if they do have currently medical home health services, they can be placed on hold. And once that has been completed, then we can come on board um, with the capable program. A new exciting uh, part that has been added is the caregiver um, care partner pilot program. So we know caregivers oftentimes neglect their own self-care needs to care for the loved ones, um, resulting in their own physical and mental decline. And Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing recognized this concern and started a new pilot program, the Capable Care Partner Program, to assist our caregivers by providing support from a social worker to address the needs that they may have. The key is that they must be a participant in the Capable Program. So they would have a loved one that's in the Capable Program, and then they would come on board um, as part of this pilot program to receive that support. So the occupational therapist is the first person to go into the home with the capable um, program. And I'm always excited to go in and work with the participant. Um, I like to always review the home safety checklist before the home assessment. Um, it's important to help them begin thinking about um, the home environment and safety and small ways that they can reduce that fall risk. Um, and so going through that can be very helpful. There's some great tips in the checklist and it's part of our, um, what we do the first session. So it kind of prepares for the second session. So initially as an OTI, I work with them on the first session and they will do kind of a self-assessment going through um, how they're doing in different areas. So I'll ask them questions about their mobility. For example, how difficult is it for you to um, balance when you're in the shower? How difficult is it for you to move in and out of the shower safely? And then I'll also ask them, how important is it for you to learn new safety strategies in those areas? Mm -hmm. And so from that, they'll give me ratings, um, a rating on how difficult it is, and then a rating on whether it's important to them to learn safety strategies or have support in that area. Um, so I'll do that with mobility, I'll do that with their ADLs and then IADLs to kind of see where they're having some struggles. And so after that self-assessment, we'll talk with them about the next visit. And at the next visit, I'll actually be doing their home safety assessment and looking at ways to make their home safer. And so we'll go through this checklist to kind of prepare them in advance for that next visit. This is a great resource for caregivers um, just to look at ways to make that home safer. So um, this is a, the safety checklist. And the first thing we look at is um, we talk to them about falls in the home. Um, and each year, thousands of older adults fall um, in the home and it becomes, um, it, it can cause very serious injuries. There's a lot of statistics on there. 
Um, falls are often due to hazards that are easily overlooked, but very easy to fix. So that's one of the main things. There's little things that you don't even think about every day that as I walk through as a certified aging in place specialist, I notice things that maybe they don't even notice. And then we can talk about how we can uh, correct those things. So that's exactly what this checklist does. And it helps them think through. Um, I'm not going to want to go in and tell them, okay, this needs to be changed or this has to be moved. But I want to share the safety concerns and give them an opportunity before my next visit to think about ways that they might want to um, make some of those changes. So I always like to do this at the first visit and give them that two weeks to kind of think about it and review it before I come back and actually do the, the actual home safety assessment. And so we'll look at each room and um, each hazard that could be within that room. So moving forward, I talk with them about, you know, simple things like looking at the floors and we'll talk through this question and answer. So it may, the first one says, you know, do you have to walk around furniture? So I'll talk with them. A lot of times I'll go into homes and there is just a lot of furniture in the way and, and moving around, it can be very difficult. They may be using a walker, they may have a wheelchair. So talking about, you know, that, that safe space, having enough space to move around without having, um, it be a, become a fall risk. Um, and then an easy solution for that is just asking someone to move that furniture to help clear that path. We'll talk about throw rugs. They can really be something that can trip you up when um, they're walking with a walker or just in general, if it's not really secured down, it can actually be a fall risk. And we'll talk with them about that. Um, a lot of uh, seniors have their favorite rug. So it may be something that we need to put some double-sided tape down to help secure it. It may not be something that they want to remove. And we'll talk with them about that. Also with the floor is just clutter in general, kind of talking about, you know, keeping things picked up. Blankets can be a real fall hazard that just drape over just enough off the couch to catch your foot when you're walking by. Little things like that that can cause that, um, that injury, that fall that can be um, make a difference. And then um, if there's wires or, or things across the floor, cords, a lot of times there's cords draping across a, an area where they could trip. Then we'll talk about how we could tape those cords back or coil them against the wall, um, even rerouting cords to make that safer for them. We'll also look at steps and stairs, that's a big one. So are there items on the stairs? Um, talk about always keeping those things out of the way. In this picture, you'll notice there's things right against that stair rail where they're needing to hold on to. So they're gonna have to navigate around that. So that would be a fall risk. So kind of pointing out those things, talking with them about that and just kind of getting them started thinking about that. If we can prevent that fall, that's our goal. So that's why we wanna talk about that. If there's loose steps or loose carpet on the steps, talk about you know securing that. Sometimes carpet is just worn out and it needs to be removed and had, have some non-slip uh, rubber tread put down. A lot of things that can be done um, and common repairs that our home repair specialist makes. So a lot of times he's having to secure rails on stairs or secure or replace a broken step. Um, especially outside, we see a lot of um, steps that are needing repaired or rails that are wobbly that need to be secured. So just making sure that, that those items have been taken care of and secured. Uh, next thing is looking in the kitchen. So that's a really common um, space that we look at. Are there things on the um, up in the high shelves that need to be brought down to a lower shelf? I even talk with them about um, placing items on the counter and putting, in, you know, having organizers for their items. So the least amount of having to reach up high for items um, is better because that's where you're taking a big risk for a fall. So leaning back to kind of reach up and stretching to, to carry something heavy down and then losing balance is very common cause for falls. So we talk about that and, and looking at the most common items that they use. How can we organize those and, and get those in a space where they can reach them easier? And then on the other picture, you'll notice a step stool. Um, the safer ones have a rail that you can hold on to. We prefer, you know, to ask for help um, with our seniors if they need to get things down. If they're going to be moving things from higher shelves, ask a family member, ask a loved one just to help them with that project of, of reorganizing those items down lower. But if they needed to use a step, we, we like one with a rail. We do not want them getting up on a chair. So we'll kind of talk about how that's a safer option um, with them, just kind of getting that thought process going. 
And then again, bathrooms, we know that that's our number one fall risk area. So is the tub um, or the shower slippery, putting down that, you know, non-slip rubber mat on the floor or some strips, having um, a mat on the outside that has a rubber backing. So when they come out with, you know, wet feet that they have something that's not slippery to stand on. Um, do they need support getting in and out of the tub? We've talked about grab bars and where we might want to put some grab bars for them. And that's something that um, our home repair specialists can do um, with that. And, and we can talk more about, about his role in the bedrooms. So with the bed, we like to talk about, is there a lamp near the bed that's hard to reach? Um, or is there not a lamp at all? So it's important to have some kind of light they can turn on. As we know, um, we talked about that aging process. We're making a lot more trips to the bathroom. So we want to make sure that path from the bed to the bathroom is lit up. Um, that may be putting in some night lights. And if there's not a plug, um, putting in some that um, you could actually have as rechargeable ones that you can charge with your phone. So we've put those in in places where there just really wasn't any good lighting just to make that light brighter um, and their motion sensor. So they'll come on when they move. So those are really important. So having that clear path, not having any clutter in that pathway, and then having it well lit. So other things that you can do to prevent falls, um, exercising. So with our program, our nurse um, works on some basic exercises with the participants that can just help make them stronger, improves their balance and coordination, and altogether that just reduces fall risk. And then talking with them about um, their medicines. The RN will go through those medicines and make sure there's not certain ones that can make them sleepy or dizzy. Talk about timing on when they would want to take those medicines. So that's important. And then having their vision checked regularly. So as we age, our vision is decreasing. So that's something to always have it checked and you may need um, additional lighting. And then getting up slowly after being seated or lying down is really important as we age. Um, you may have noticed um, even just raising up now for me is, is more difficult. I can get, if I pop right out of bed, I can get kind of lightheaded. So it does cause us to um, feel a little off balance. So talking with our loved ones about that, as we age, we need to move slower. That's a hard one to, to adjust to sometimes is walking slower, rising slower. Um, all of those things are really important. With shoes, it's really important to wear shoes that have closed backs. So we want well-fitted slip resistant shoes and try to avoid flip-flops or those open back shoes. It's very easy to lose your balance in those where you um, could step backwards and kind of step out of them and it puts you off um, balance and it can cause a fall. So we've seen that. So talking about they may love their slippers that they wanna put on, but making sure that they have those closed backs on them. Um, there's some great options with that. So it's really important to have good uh, shoes that they wear. And then I've talked a little bit about improving light because our vision as we age is um, reduced. We need to add more light um, and then, you know, putting in some of those brighter light bulbs. So increasing that amount of brightness in the home. Also having safe um, uniform lighting throughout the room. That may mean adding um, light to dark areas or hanging a lightweight curtain um, to reduce glare. So glare can cause problems with being able to see as well. And then a lot of times um, painting some contrasting colors or having something on the edge of steps or stairs or different areas where the surface um, changes in height but the color also looks the same. That can be a real trip hazard. So that's something that I would be looking for when I'm walking around. If the floor is very similar colors, but it um, raises up at one point, it, it'd be important to um, try to put some contrast to that area just to bring attention to that for more safety. Other safety tips include um, keeping emergency numbers um, in large print near the phone. And then having that phone um, near the floor in case they fall. But nowadays we have cell phones. So many of our seniors have cell phones and I love the idea of having that cell phone on them. So if they were to fall and it was an emergency, they have that phone right there. They're not having to try to crawl to get to a phone to call for help. So they would have it on them. They have um, in the picture, you'll notice like a crossbody that they can wear. Um, if also they can have um, the life alert call alarm buttons that they could wear. But um, a lot of our seniors like to just have their cell phones. It's easier um, 
to have those emergency numbers programmed in, but both are good options. These are just some um, flyers that we put out um, about our program when we go to different community events to share. So you, they have just um, the details about our programs um, and telling just a summary of them. So it's good information. The referral process, if you're interested in having uh, your loved one be considered and you talk with them about it, they can call the referral process. Our program manager here, Sherry Wright, would love to talk with them about that. Um, it's important to remember that with the referral, um, it doesn't have to be when they're in really having a lot of difficulty. It may be that you're just beginning to notice or they're just beginning to notice a little bit of difficulty with getting in around, getting around their home, getting in and out of the tub, um, and they're needing just a little bit of support. Um, we want to come on board before um, they have an injury, before a fall has occurred, occurred and, and put them in the hospital. So that's when we want to come on board. So what happens after being referred? So the program manager will call and explain the capable prog program, um, complete an intake and screening to determine eligibility. And then if they're eligible, ask if they want to participate. Like I said before, if they are currently on uh, receiving medical home health, they can be put on hold. Um, if they're not eligible for some reason, they will, um, the, uh, the program manager will explain to the participant why, and then look at other program options that they may be eligible for. So next, I wanted to go over just some uh, additional resources that we have. Um, and I put a whole list together. And this does include some great uh, videos on transfers. Again, it, I'm going to show you some of the sites um, that Lowe's has put together um, and other um, support groups that can help caregivers. So I'm going to click on a few of these and go through while I have a few extra minutes before we open up for questions. I wanted to show you some of these and then they will be made available to you as well. So I'm going to click over back to that. So one of my, uh, the best ones that I've talked about before, again, is with Lowe's. I love the resources that they have. So they have how to install a grab bar. So you can go to their site. Um, it talks about what you need to know before you go shop for them. I love um, this section, where to install your grab bars. This is a great resource when you're looking at that. So I love the, the grab bar at the entrance of the shower. Um, these are great uh, resources to tell you where you might want to place them. Even near toilets, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Great resources on here. Um, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions. So that is one that I love. Another one that is really good also within theirs is they have a, li a livability section. So um, if you're going through here, it tells you um, how to make your home more accessible. It talks about tips to adapt your home as you age. Um, I love tips for buying accessible home items. And then how to install grab bars, how to make your home safer. So a lot of great resources that um, is just good information for you to know, not necessarily that you have to purchase it from them. Just um, having these great resources is, is really good. And then the other one I was going to pop up, I have a couple plain, you know, basic handouts with those step-by-step -step instructions for transfers, wheelchair to bathtub. Um, again, these are some great resources with pictures, so you can always reference those, similar ones. Um, and then another one that I like is the Health and Human Services has a great resource section, um, caregiver training and planning. So they've got trainings, um, and then within this section, they have videos on uh, transfers, so all kinds of good resources on, on their site, and I have that linked on there as well. So a lot of times we don't know where to find information um, when we come into a situation where we're needing that, that additional support. Um, and then another one that I love is the check for uh, fall risk. So this is something we do a, a smaller version of this through the capable program where we um, talk about, you know, asking them questions and related to their fall risk. And then we add it up. Um, if they score more than four points, then you can discuss um, that they have a risk 
for falls and have them discuss that with their doctor and maybe get a physical therapy referral. So that's a great one. I'd like to touch on um, the age of Central Texas has uh, a lending program where you can get some items that you might need, wheelchairs, rollators, walkers, um, that can be um, provided for you to borrow. Um, and they love it if you can donate any items that you aren't using back. So that's very important um, that that can be used for others when they need it. So that's another great resource. And last, I was gonna touch on one last one that I think is so important. This is um, very easy. It's findhelp.org. You can put in your, um, your zip code, click on it, and it will bring up great resources for you in your area. Resources for housing, for food, emergency food, food pantries, transit in your area that may be for trips to the doctor's office. Um, all kinds of great resources um, throughout this. So you just put in your uh, zip code and it can take you to different um, programs that are available for you. So those are some great resources. I wanted to go down uh, with you. Here's my references. and. I think we're ready for the question and answer section. All right, fantastic. Thank you for all of that great information. Uh, before, Sherry, before we get to the questions that are in the chat, I just wanted to confirm that the Capable program is currently not available for folks who are living in Travis County. Is that correct? Um, there is a, with the Meals on Wheels of Central Texas, they do have the capable program for Travis County. We just have it for the four rural counties that were listed before. So if you do live in Travis, you can contact the Meals on Wheels of Central Texas and get onto their program. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. I also wanted to point out um, for everybody who's viewing, a couple of years ago, AARP was successful in Texas in passing the Caregiver Act, and it was signed into law here in Texas. It's in a number of states, but Texas is one that participates in it. It basically says that when you are being discharged from the hospital, that the hospital has to identify who is the caregiver of record. And then they are responsible for teaching the caregiver of record everything you need to know before you go home. It's the same with uh, if you're discharging from rehab. So they're not going to send you home without teaching you how to do these skills that you need to know. Things like wound care or transfers or how you need to do all these things. It's for two reasons. One, they don't want you to come back to the hospital because they get dinged financially if you do. So they want to make sure that you don't come back, but also it's part of being responsible. They want you to be successful in your uh, rehabilitation when you go home. And so sometimes you have to advocate for yourself a little bit because it is a fairly new law. Um, not all of the folks at the hospitals and the rehabs know about it. So sometimes you have to advocate. So you will always find out who your social worker is at the hospital, who's your head nurse. Tell those people, I am the caregiver. I need to know everything I need to know when dad, mom, husband, wife are going home to ensure that they give you all that information before you leave the hospital. All right, Sherry, I'm going to turn it back over to you to ask some of these great questions that we have. And of course, we still have time. If you have other questions that you would like answered, type those into the chat for us. Mars says about how and where do we go for medical pro training? Um, is it recommended that you see the training from a medical professional before or performing transfer? I think Rob just answered yeah. if being discharged they should teach you that and Dina what about if it's just they want to know that for safe transferring in the home right and so that's what I was I I, I love that you shared that Rob and also um, it's important any caregiver like sometimes there's going to be a couple people that are going to be helping um, so they can all come in for that training that's really important and then when they're at their home if they're still feeling a little uncertain that's what I was saying um they, a lot of times if they're having home health, they can ask, you know, someone to come in and review that with them. And then a lot of these, um, there's a lot of resources with videos and step-by-step -step just for reminders, because you do it a few times in, in there and then um, in the, in the 
the nursing facility or the hospital and then you get home and it's like, now what did they say to do? So it's really good to have, um, you know, the handouts. That's why I have those easy steps. Go through those steps with your loved ones so they know what's going to be taking place. They have a part in what they're doing. You have a part in what you're doing and you're both on the same page. That will help prevent falls. But definitely get that training um, from the professionals. Um, Barb said she uses Google Home to turn lights on and off. And we have like Alexa and all that to help also if you have that technology. Yes, we have uh, the uh, Amazon Echoes at our home and yes. use those. So there's a lot of great technology that can help you. You know, Dina talked about the lights that are um, motion sensitive and they're fairly mm -hmm. inexpensive. They're night lights yes. that you just plug into the plug and they have a motion sensor on them and they will come on as you're walking through the room. You can use the little echoes, which are very inexpensive to purchase mm -hmm. and plug your lights into those. And then when you get up and you need to go to the bathroom, you just say echo, turn on the light. And that's so much easier. That's awesome. Um, Marissa, I think her name said, um, she had to step away for a minute, but she came back. She said, she didn't know whether, um, it was mentioned about making walkways wider or less narrow would help prevent falls too. Yes. Having that extra space. So, and we, we do this a lot. Um, a lot of times our entries into some of our rooms, um, are needing just a little extra space and they have hinges that can give that additional space that can be put in. So definitely, you know, trying to uh, accommodate in an affordable way. So instead of having like a, a major reconstruction, there's, there's little ways that you can make that. So you can actually get that additional space in a door from, from those, um, door hinges that we put in that gives the full opening. And then Maria asked if there's an online balance class available in Williamson County. I know the Area Agency on Aging, the health and wellness program, they do offer um, uh, different classes, chronic um, uh, for chronic and even for balance, preventing mm -hmm. falls and stuff like that. You can go onto our website, CAPCOG, um, and then go under the Area Agency on Aging section, and they will list that. Um, even that we do have a Facebook page, you can um, go to that and the different classes that are available. They're not there all the time, but we do have classes. And I know Rhonda, who's in charge of that, has that um, different classes in the different counties. So you can even call here and ask about um, those classes. And yes. Yeah. Age of Central Texas also offers those classes. They're called a matter of balance. balance. And they are evidence-based classes. Um, we offer them. Area Aging also offers them across the whole Central Texas area. You can go to capcog.org and mm -hmm. you can find the classes that are being offered by the Area Agency on Aging, or you can go to ageofcentraltx.org and you can find the ones that we're offering. We also do have them both in person and virtual. Mm -hmm. So they're available if you're not able to get to a class, they're also available online. And as Sherry said, they're happening year round all the time. One class will end, another one will start. And so if there's not one that's near you, you simply ask for it and I'm sure that between us, we will get one for you. Yes, those are great classes. I just want to yeah. say a lot of my seniors, I always recommend those. And I've just had great results from the just they come back and they've learned so much because they learn about how to maintain their balance. And then they also do exercise to help support that. So it's a great program that matter of balance. I, I agree. It's a wonderful program. Dina, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned about uh, using a gate belt and how that is one of our best tools as caregivers. Can you explain just very briefly, how do you use a gate belt? Yes. So you're going to want to um, put that the gate belt around their waist and you want to leave about a two finger width. Um, it'll be still tight enough to hold them. Um, and that's what you're going to um, have to um, support them when you're um, doing a transfer. You can hold on to that. Um, it prevents injuries because there's a, a lot of times they, they may want to hold on to you or you don't really want to be tugging on their arms when you're helping do a transfer. Also, it's really good to just have your hand on the back of it if they're a little unsteady walking around because you can help balance them with that belt. Um, and then if for some reason they were to, to stumble and start to fall, that's a way that you can slowly lower them down so that they don't have serious injury. 
Yeah. And again, those are very, very inexpensive to yes. purchase. I mean, they they literally just fit right around the waist of the person who's wearing them. And then as you're walking along, you can just kind of hold the back of it. And just in case they start to teeter, they start to fall, you've got hold of them. And, you know, if they do start falling, then you can guide them slowly down to the ground instead of them falling quickly. We've been using one with my father because he had a brain bleed stroke, which affected his balance and his ability. And as he's regaining his balance, that was great for us when he first came out of rehab because it put a little more confidence in us that he wasn't going to fall because we had hold of him, yet he still had his full freedom. So they are really fantastic things. Another great thing that I've seen, and we've actually got some here, these are awesome. This part fits into the handle on your car, mm -hmm. where your car closes and latches. This fits into the part of the latch, and it basically gives you a handle to hold on to getting in and out of the car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just stick it in, get out, pull it out, drop it on the seat mm -hmm. and leave it in the car. They are also very inexpensive and wonderful things to have. Dina, thank you for mentioning about the Age of Central Texas Health Equipment Lending Program. We do give away durable medical equipment to anyone who needs it. No questions asked, no requirements at all. So you can access that from us. Also, some of our partners around the area also offer that. Your drive of seniors in all of our surrounding counties also have durable medical closets up in Round Rock at Senior Access. They have Ollie's Closet that has quite a bit of great uh, materials that are available. If you're in Williamson County, then Faith in Action has a great closet, as does our partners over at the Caring Place in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And we have also set up closets in some of the outlying areas with some of our partners, such as the Kyle Area Senior Zone down in Kyle, at the Onion Creek Senior Center in Buda, and in Taylor at the Baylor Scott & White Hospital. So if you are ever in need, you can always contact either the Area Agency on Aging or contact us here at Age of Central Texas, and we can direct you to that durable medical equipment because we know that sometimes it's hard to find, and we also know that many of us are on fixed incomes, and having an extra $80 to go out and buy a transfer bench for the shower is just out of our reach. And so we want to make sure that you stay safe. And so we will get that for you and make sure that you have it. We have just a couple more minutes if anyone else has any other questions that they would like to ask. We're on our halfway point for our virtual programming this week. We have two more days of great information and resources and presentations. And the same Zoom link that you joined us with today is the same one that you will use tomorrow and on Thursday to join us for those sessions. As a reminder, we're going to send you the uh, PowerPoints for all of our presentations this week. So all those great resources that Dina had on those last slides, we're going to send those slides to you so that you have those links so you can go and watch those great videos that show you how to do those transfers safely so that you can go and look at all of those great handouts and that online information about how to adapt your home. Because let's face it, our homes were never built for us to age into effectively. And so we need to start thinking about if we want to stay in our homes, we need to think about how we're going to do that successfully. Uh, we have one other question, and this is a good one. We have this a lot. How do you overcome a person who doesn't want your help? You have a parent who's living mm -hmm. independently, and they, you know they need the help, yet they're going to refuse. Oh, I'm fine. I don't need it. I'm safe, and then they stumble as they walk away from you. How do you overcome those objections to help keep your loved one safe? That is a, that is a very good question. And just, you know, encouraging them and, you know, showing them some of these simple ways to make changes. Um, it, it's, it's a hard, hard thing to do, but they will begin to realize their need and, you know, bringing others on board. So there may be other family members or friends that are dealing with some of the same things. So it's always a good resource to, you know, have other people that have maybe dealt with some of these things with them. Um, 
that's a tough question. You want them to, to see that you're trying to help but not, you know, overstep your bounds. So um, that is challenging. And we work a lot with that with the capable program. So we do, um, you know, motivational interviewing where we're helping them see their needs um, and then equipping them with the ability to set those goals and make those changes. So that's, that's a, you know, a very good question that can be very tough. So we do a, do a lot of work with that with the capable program. And as Dina mentioned, sometimes getting that third party to mm -hmm. be the person can be very helpful. I know as a caregiver for my parents, sometimes they get tired of hearing what I say. And sometimes it goes in one ear and it goes out the other. That's just our human nature. But using somebody that they will listen to, a best friend, um, another family member, um, their minister. I have used our doctor as my third party at times and told them in advance of our appointment, hey, I need you to tell my parent that this is important and use them as your ally and say, you know, can you please talk to them about their fall risk and say, it would be really great if you got some grab bars in the bathroom. Okay, we've got to start. We're going, at least we're starting somewhere. And then you've opened that conversation and now we're moving forward. So, you know, we we want to count our small victories and we can build on those small victories as we head down toward our end path. So, Dina, I want to thank you so much for this great information. This was so helpful for us. We know that falls are one of the major causes of death and injury in older adults, and we want to prevent them as much as we can. And so having this great information will help with that. So we really appreciate it. Sherry, thank you for joining us as well. We appreciate you being here. And we appreciate you at home taking your time to join us to learn this information. Remember that we have got two more days of these great presentations, and you can always find more information online on our YouTube channels. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.